All right, lesson 2.4 and 2.5 using the sine and cosine ratios this time to calculate angles and lengths. It's going to be very similar to what we did with the tangent ratio, only this time, of course, two different ratios. You're going to see that um, because we're dealing with two different ratios, it's going to involve different uh, sides and, uh, and angles. All right, so um, this first page that I have right here is an activity I'd like you to go through. You can do this one with a partner as well um, and, uh, and give this a try right here. Uh, I believe it is in your textbook, so you can match it up with that if you like in those sections. Um, so complete those uh, um, uh, activities, and then you can move to the next page here. Okay. So uh, at this point, you should be pausing and going ahead and trying that out. All right, let's get going with the notes here. In a right triangle, the ratios that relate each leg to the hypotenuse depend only on the measures of the acute angle. and not on the size of the triangle. These ratios are called the sine and the cosine ratios. So uh, triangle size doesn't really make any difference. Just on, uh, on what the angles actually are in the triangle, that's going to um, change how the, how the ratios and how the angles move. All right. So, um, I'm going to give you guys this little diagram here, and we're going to label this, and this is where our, uh, our Sokoto is going to come from. So, um, in terms of this uh, triangle right here, let's say that uh, A is our reference angle, so we'll just denote it like so. The side opposite of angle A is going to be your opposite side, so you can fill this in. And that makes the other one the adjacent. And then your hypotenuse, of course, is always opposite of the 90 degrees. It's up here, like so. So, what we can say is uh, for the tangent ratio, this tangent ratio we've already dealt with, the tangent ratio of an angle A is the ratio of the length opposite angle A over the length adjacent angle A. So that was our TOA, all right? When you have the tangent ratio, it's opposite over adjacent. All right, the sine of angle A is the ratio of the length opposite, so same as tangent, opposite angle A over the length of the hypotenuse. So that's a little bit different. We haven't had the hypotenuse in this mix. And the cosine, you might be able to guess where this one's going to go. The cosine ratio is, um, the, the cosine of an angle A is the ratio of the length adjacent angle A over the length of the hypotenuse. And from this, your famous Sokotoa comes. Because for sine of A, we have opposite over the hypotenuse. For cosine, we have adjacent over hypotenuse. And for tangent, we have opposite over adjacent. And so we get so ka toa. So katoa has been kind of around forever. I'll just highlight these ones. Um, if you ask your parents maybe anything that they remember about their math education, one of the things that they probably will remember, they might not remember what, really what it means anymore, but they'll remember SOKOTOA. Um, it's just an easy little acronym for us to remember this. And um, I find students are always uh, muttering this on tests and uh, helps them out quite a bit. Okay, So uh, let's push forward here. Um, just like we did with the tangent inverse, um, you can use a scientific calculator to determine the measure of an angle for sine and cosine. So for sine, we're going to use the sine inverse. Okay, and it's read like this, sine inverse. That's actually how you spell sine, S-I-N-E, not uh, like the sign on the street. And cosine inverse is actually spelled like this. Um, I'll try my best not to do this, but one of my pet peeves is when people say sin and cos and tan. Uh, I like you to say tangent, sine, and cosine. So um, try to use the correct uh, math lingo, if you will. Okay, let's try an example. Let's see how we do here. Determine the measures 
of angle G and angle H to the nearest tenth of a degree. Well, the interesting thing is, is really you only have to find one angle. Once you find the other angle, right, you can always subtract it from 90 degrees, and then you're, uh, you're good. So, let's look for angle G first. Okay. So, what we're always going to do is we're going to use the information that we have. So, in relation to angle G, we have the adjacent side, so I'll just label that, and we have the hypotenuse. So now you need to think which ratio combi combines those two. Well, we can just go now the cosine, of course. So cosine is equal to your, I'll just write adjacent over hypotenuse. And now we substitute in. Well, the adjacent side was worth 6. The hypotenuse was 14. There should be a G in here. So the cosine of G is equal to 6 over 14. Lastly, to get G by itself, what we do is we take the cosine inverse. Essentially, we divide it by cosine. And we get 6 over 14. That's how I'm going to write it, because that's how you put it into your calculator. Get your calculator out. Make sure, once again, that you are in degree mode. So this time, we do the cosine inverse of 6 over 14. And it said to round to the nearest tenth of a degree, so we would say that our answer is 64.6 degrees. All right. So, like I said, if you're looking for an angle H now, it's not that tough. You can just take 90 degrees and subtract it to get H. For this exercise, though, I'm going to show you, like, pretending like we, we couldn't do that, for instance. Maybe, like, we didn't know what angle uh, G is, just so we can go through the exercise of using sine here. So I'll do sine in blue. So if we're looking for this angle over here, we would take... Since we have the opposite now, with the 6 and the hypotenuse, 14, we can go the sine of h this time is equal to the opposite, 6 over 14. To get h by itself, we will go h is equal to the sine inverse of 6 over 14. Put this into our calculator. Sine inverse this time, 6 divided by 14. And we get 25 point four degrees. And you'll notice that if you add these two together, they will give you 90 degrees. All right. uh, the next one. Next one might be a good one for you to try on your own here. It is a word problem. It's just using the same stuff we've been uh, working with. So, this is a water bomber is flying at an altitude of 5,000 feet. The plane's radar shows that it is 8,000 feet from the target site. What is the angle of elevation of the plane measured from the target site to the nearest degree? Now, some of these word problems, especially one like this, might be kind of tough for us to understand right now. Let's draw ourselves um, a little bit of a picture. So, I'm going to draw yourself or draw you guys a, a beautiful plane. Uh, let's take a look. Oh yeah, it's a beauty. And uh, let's see, that's its kind of wing. This is the side angle, anyways. And so, let's go straight on down here. And then this is like the the target, if you will. 90 degree angle, let's see, what does it tell you? It says it's flying at an altitude of 5,000, so this would be 5,000 over here. It says that the plane's radar shows that it is 8,000 feet from the target site, so that means that the actual distance, or your hypotenuse, is 8,000. Uh, they want to find what is the angle of elevation of the plane measured to the target site. So what we're actually looking for is we're looking for this angle right here. They want to figure out what that is, so I'm going to call it theta for now. Okay. So. What we can do is uh, first got to start out by f picking out what ratio you want to use. So in relation to that theta right there, you have to figure out, am I using so, ka, or possibly even toa, you never know. We have my opposite right there and the hypotenuse. So that's a sine gig. Sine of theta is equal to my opposite, 5,000, over my hypotenuse, 8,000. In order to get the theta by itself, we'll take the sine inverse. And we'll put this in. I'll show you a little trick right here. Since 5,000 over 8,000, same thing as 5 out of 8, you can just use 5 out of 8. And we get 38.68, and it's set to round to the nearest degree, so we can say that that is approximately 39 degrees. All right, so what I've uh, prepared for you guys here is a little bit of a summary. So uh, let's look at the left-hand one first. To solve for missing angle, this is what we've already done. You can identify the angle that uh, you're wanting to find. Uh, label the triangle from that angle. So you might want to label it with uh, letters or using the hypotenuse, whatever you need. Uh, identify the trig ratio you need. Are we dealing with sine, cosine, or tangent? 
set up your equation and solve. So we kind of dealt with that one. Now to solve for a missing length, identify the angle you are given this time. So um, rather than the one that you want to find the angle that you're given, label the triangle from that angle. So you'll label it with uh, adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse. Identify the trig ratio to be used, which one of those three, and then uh, set up your equation and solve. So let's try one here. So it says they want you to look for BC. So I'll just kind of highlight that. That's this side. So that's the angle that I'm given. The side that I'm looking for in terms of that angle, well, this one's my opposite, this one's my adjacent, and this is my hypotenuse. So I'm looking for the adjacent side, and I have the hypotenuse. You have to consider, then, which ratio combines adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, hopefully you're starting to remember that so ka toa, the ka, a over h, is going to be the cosine ratio. So we would take the cosine of the degree that we have, so that's 50 degrees, is equal to your adjacent. This time I'm going to call the adjacent BC, capital BC, All right. over my hypotenuse, which is 5.2. And hopefully you recall how to rearrange for something like this. So we're trying to isolate for BC. You've got to get that by itself. What I suggest you do is you just bring the 5.2 out here. So we have BC is equal to 5.2 times the cosine of 50 degrees. And that's it, folks. Put that into our calculator and we're good. 5.2, the cosine of 50 degrees, equals 3.34, and I think it's at the nearest centimeters. So we would say it is 3 centimeters. All right, not too shabby. Let's try some on the back page. I'm assuming we'll probably have uh, a sign one or two to play around with. Number four, determine the length of DE to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So this time we're looking for that side. Okay. We always start out when we're looking for um, side lengths with the angle that we have, so I'll just write that like so. So, I am going to uh, figure out what sides I have. I've got the adjacent up here, the opposite is here, and hypotenuse. So this time I'm looking for a hypotenuse, and I have the opposite. So which ratio combine opposite and hypotenuse? That would be sine. Sine of 55 degrees is equal to my opposite, 6.8, over my hypotenuse, which I'll call DE. Now, in order to isolate DE, if you recall, when the variable's in the denominator here, I suggest you do a little bit of a swap here. So DE now is equal to 6.8 divided by the sine of 55 degrees. All right. Putting this into our calculator. We get 8.3 centimeters. Okay. <clears throat> Last one here. Um, I wouldn't mind you trying this uh, this one on your own. Uh, you might have to do uh, a little bit of work. Um, it's a good one to uh, see if you kind of understood so far. This one says determine the perimeter um, and all the missing angle measures. So there could be quite a bit of uh, work to do here. So let's see. Let's start with the perimeter. All right. So uh, the triangle I'm going to focus on is this triangle J K M to start with. Okay, because if I can find those two sides, since we have a rectangle, I can assume that I can find the side from J to N and N to M. So let's concentrate on dealing with JK first. Okay, I'm not joking. Let's do JK first. So in order to do JK first, we will look at the angle that I have, so 63. I have the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for that would be the opposite. So we'll do something like so. Since we have, are looking for opposite and we have hypotenuse, we use the sine ratio, sine of 63 degrees is equal to my opposite, which is JK. No, seriously, it is JK. All over the hypotenuse, 5.6. So JK is equal to 5.6 sine of 63 degrees. So we have 5.6 sine of 63 is equal to 4.9, uh, let's see, do they said to round to the nearest tenth of a centimeter? So I'm going to leave this as 4.9896. I know it keeps going. The reason I'm not going to round right now is we don't want to ever round until we get to our last step. So I'm just going to highlight that because that information is going to be important. Um, this is interesting because if we know that JK is equal to that, then that means that this is also equal to NM. So keep that in mind. Now, let's find uh, KM. All right, so I'll just kind of highlight this side. We have that angle again. This time, of course, this is your uh, adjacent side, so we're going to have to use a different ratio. The cosine of 63 degrees is equal to your adjacent, or KM, over 5.6. So 
5.6 cosine of 63 degrees. That's equal to Km. 